what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this will be my spoiler free review for fear street part 1 1994 one of the first installments in the netflix plan trilogy based on the rl stein novels uh, or an rl stein series of books teen horror novels that came out many decades ago so this first entry in this trilogy this amazing trilogy that i'll, I'll just say because i've seen all of them at this point so to start off, this is directed by Leigh Janiak with a script co-written also by Janiak herself and Phil Grisadio. And basically it is following a group of teenagers in the town Shadyside, Ohio, who are terrorized by an ancient evil responsible for a series of brutal murders that have plagued the town for centuries. Our cast includes Kiana Madeira, Olivia Scott Welsh, Benjamin Flores Jr., Julia Rewald, Fred Heckinger, Ashley Zuckerman, Daryl Britt, Britt, Gibson, Britt Gibson and Maya Hawk. Now, off the bat, you guys have already been talking about it yourself online and in a lot of other threads that I've seen about this film. This film has a lot of scream influence already beginning with the opening scene that includes an opening attack at the uh, local mall in the town, at the Shadyside Mall. Um, one thing about this this film here is that it's very fast paced and what i mean by that is you have downtime to get to know the characters not all of them specifically because i will say that for the most part in this first outing you get a lot of paper a lot of paper thin thinness to them since you're just meeting them and it's so fast that you don't really get to know them all that well outside of our protagonist uh dina who's played by kiana madeira and her significant other or ex significant other for most of this film, uh, Sam, who was played by Olivia Scott. So they are, of course, part of the LGBTQ community, something that was refreshing to see, considering the, like, I guess, the time period that they set in. So I, li I like that aspect of this movie a lot there. Not that that wasn't going on, of course, at that point, but you know, it's it's not, it wasn't as prevalent then as it is now, as, as I'll say, as more welcoming as, as we are now today. Or as welcoming as I hope we are starting to become. But anyway, the film, of course, is set in 1994. It doesn't capture the 90s, I'll say, in the best light. I feel like that's a hard thing for a lot of horror films to do or certain films in particular to just do in general when they're trying to have movies based in the 90s. It's 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 almost like a hit or miss. Some of them capture it well. Others kind of do a adequate job. I'll say this does an adequate job at capturing the 90s, but basically... What we have here is the town of Shadyside and this curse that it has looming over its head due to a witch that was killed many years ago named Sarah Fear. Sarah Fear was killed and she cursed the land as a result of her as a result of her death. Now we do learn things along the way that go into explaining that death a little bit more in depth and it kind of subverts what we already have known the entire time so stay tuned again for my other two reviews coming out about this trilogy but the chemistry amongst the cast you know these characters i don't want to say that they have little to no i don't want to say they have no chemistry but there's times when i'm watching this they're not very convincing as friends i would say that the performances are decent and they're good and you'll you'll be engaged the entire time because again you have these callbacks to these it's very reminiscent of these old school slasher films that came out that are like scream or like an urban legend or i know what you did last summer where you have these cookie cutter characters that you don't really learn too much about but there's a central conflict that they're all involved in that you as the viewer will become invested in because of how the, the movie is directed this movie moves very fast it it's very in your face it's very energetic marco beltrami is who who scored scream he's lending his um his talent to the score for this film and when those cues come on from marco beltrami i will say that that enhances all of the all of the dangerous moments that are presented on screen you'll be on the edge of your seat it'll definitely get your heart racing if you are sitting down and actually just absorbing and taking in every little thing that comes on your screen the cgi blood i'm pretty sure they use cgi blood i i want to say that's been my biggest dislike with these with these films the cgi blood i i, I don't like seeing that it's not overly overly bad or anything but it's it's blatantly obvious that it's it's cgi and it's just oh 
CGI, CGI, CGI. I can't really take it too much these days anymore. But outside of that, you know, the script itself, there's a lot of things that might not make sense at first because you have to watch the other entries probably to appreciate this a lot more. So on that end, the characters, again, they, they, they fit like these, these molds, these stereotypes that you would get in a horror movie. You have your lead protagonist, Dina, who's going through something uh, like a not necessarily a crisis, but she just lost her girlfriend. She is being told she'll end up just like her father, who apparently is a drunk and he has nothing going for himself in life. And then she so she's trying to deal with that and overcome a recent breakup. So you have a protagonist who's trying to overcome a, a not a recent tragedy, but recent heartbreak, I'll say, because losing your girlfriend isn't the worst thing that can happen to you in this life. But. You have her brother played by uh, her brother was played by Benjamin Flores Jr. He plays Josh. He's like an Internet Internet geek, I'll say, that spends all his time researching the de details about the town and the town's past and all these different killers that have come up, come and gone due to the curse from Sarah Fair. Then you have the cheerleader that he's too afraid to talk to. You have the I guess the dumb jock for like a brief second because this is sam's boyfriend there's a lot of these character archetypes that you have that fill in the molds that you would expect in these cookie cutter horror films that you you would get in the 90s or the late 80s early late 70s even the movie in and of itself hell of a, hell of a fun time i'll say it's not the best when it comes to again the pacing taking away from you i guess you becoming to know some details about some of these characters i'll just say that so you'll not be as attached to the characters here as i'll as you will be with what i have to point out with the second installment fear street part 2 1978 but this one still is a solid beginning to this overall fun trilogy all of them are very fun to watch and i feel like fans of the horror genre you'll get a kick out of this it's not something that's bad it's just very solid at best for this first outing let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you have already make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and miss a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts my facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me see any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future i'll give this an honest six and a half out of ten and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video